everyone, this is Rob Phelan with The Simple Startup. I am here with Chris, who's going to tell us a little bit about his business. Now, this is a really exciting one. Chris has made a business out of video games. And I know a lot of you at home are like, whoa, that's possible. It is possible. And Chris is going to tell us all about it today. Chris, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you, sir? Oh, thank you so much for joining us. I'm doing awesome. So Chris, tell us a little bit about you first. Who are you? Uh, so my name is Chris Leonard. I, I'm the owner and CEO of uh, MetaPro Gaming. Um, we're right here in New Market, Maryland. I also work for General Dynamics. I'm a senior manager on Army contracts, uh, doing software development for Army projects out of Fort Detrick. Prior to that, I'm a retired chief of police out of North Carolina, and I also served in the Army as well. Oh, wow. That is quite a, a variety of experiences. So you went from military military to the police force or the other way around military to law enforcement and okay. then law enforcement into government contracting correct so how did you make that jump from law enforcement to government contracting that seems like the biggest uh step no it's it was actually pretty easy so in my line of work uh i work forensics both physical and uh, traditional forensics and then also cyber forensics uh, I transferred to a position uh, with the federal government where I actually taught cyber forensics to uh, government agencies and ran that academy for them. Wow. Okay. So then you made the leap from, well, not even the leap, you're still doing a full-time job, but you've got this now side business as well. Was it just kind of a hobby in the beginning that turned into a business or how did MetaPro Gaming really get started? So it's how most businesses get started. It's a need in the community for it, correct? So uh, I was, um, I've always been into esports. I've always been into gaming. Uh, I coached esports for a local college. Um, there was a continual need from other colleges that were wanting to start uh, getting their program set up and also a need for youth esports. Maryland doesn't sponsor uh, youth esports uh, statewide at the high school level. Uh, so that's where Meta comes in. It's the Maryland Esports Training Academy. Uh, we specialize in youth development for uh, esport games. We teach you the right way to do it, the leadership, the teamwork, and the mechanics actually help you get better in your particular game. So when did esports start becoming like an actual recognized thing? Like when did it transition from, you know, kids or kids and adults playing video games to now this is like an organized competitive event? Well, I'm old. So uh, I've been in esports since the 70s when Pong came out. So they were competitive uh, <laughs> Pong tournaments at our house even back then uh, when it came back out. But uh, esports has been continually growing. Uh, it is the largest organized sport in the world. It's bigger bigger and better than any other sport. The um, uh, Major League Gaming started off esports uh, years ago, uh, was the first into the esports program, and then it's con consistently grown. Most of the schools that uh, I recruit for for colleges, unless they have a football team, esports is the highest recruited sport on college campuses, other than football. That's just awesome. for the yeah, just for sheer numbers of scholarship athletes that are associated with football, everything else for esports, there's just greater numbers to choose from. And I I really want you guys to know that there's going to be another video that we're going to do together about the college scholarship application process and using your video game skills to get scholarships. So make sure you check that video out after you finished with this one. But let's stick with the business of MetaPro gaming for a second. Um, what does it do? So you said it kind of, it helps train students. It gets them better at video games. Like how are kids just paying for training or what's the, what's the model that the business makes money from? So think of the model as any kind of youth sports that you play for uh, in the local area. So soccer, uh, lacrosse is big in Maryland. Mm -hmm. Students pay for lessons to get better at that game and they get to compete. We do the exact same thing, except we're probably a little cheaper than traditional sports. We're $520 a semester. Our semester lasts for 16 weeks. You actually go through and you're taking a class on your sport. So if your sport is League of Legends or your sport is Overwatch, we offer 16 weeks of training by professional or college level coaches 
uh, to get you better in that game. So if you're a beginner and you've never played it before, we can get you ranked and get you competing. If you're an advanced player and you want to compete against some of the top talent, we put you in those categories as well. Some of the teams we play, UCLA, Alabama, Ole Miss, some of those top schools, we're actually playing against weekly. Uh, so that's the experience that the students will get. So whether if you're 13 years old or you're 80 years old, you can come to Meta Academy, you can compete against some of these top colleges teams and you get the skill sets uh, that you would at a traditional college program. I mean, it, it, it's awesome because esports is, I guess it would be in line with something like chess, like age is not, age is not a factor. Um, it is not a factor. You, know, you can uh, be, your, your expertise is not um, dominated by your physical ability or your um, physical maturity in any way. So yeah, it's not one of those sports that in, like that's restricted from you know, based on your size or how old you are or anything like that. Like it's a very level playing field, I would imagine for almost anybody. It, it really is. And it's, it's all inclusive. It's a good way to uh, compete in a sport against your child that if you wanted to do that as well, just like the, the appeal to a karate studio or Taekwondo where the adults get to participate. This is the exact same thing. What we divide you up by skill level and then we get people in place that actually help you uh, get better. And that's the meat and potatoes of our company is that there's a, there's a de deficiency in this state and other states in organized esports. Uh, we kind of fill that gap. And that's how the businesses, that's how most businesses get started. There's a, there's a, there's a deficiency in, in the marketplace. Your company kind of comes in and kind of fills that gap and there's space, for, you create your own space for that. And for us, for esports, this was our space. Okay, so now I really want to know like the day one to, you know, probably day 700 of your business. So how did you start? Like what, when so you, we when started you... because of that need, right? Mm -hmm. Is that we feel like we can do it uh, better, faster, cheaper than anybody else that's out on the market. There's tons of places that you can go online and get esports training, but can you get it from professional coaches? Can you get it from college level coaches? And can you get it for our price? You cannot. It's just not available out on the market right now. It's just not. Um, so, so can I pause you for a second? Cause I just really want to point out in Chris's pitch right there, guys, there was highlights of the unique selling points of this business. And it's just, it's so important to point out that it's probably so natural the way you say it, but you're pointing out that the price, the quality of what you're getting and the overall package is better than what you might find in a competitor. And that is a super interesting and key part of any pitch or any business. You need to have something unique about you that sets you apart from your competitors and you need to highlight that to your customers so they know that's what they're getting with you. Sorry, I had, I I had, tell I had you, to no, pull you back on that. No, that's, that's absolutely great. So that's part of our business is youth esports development. We also build esports arenas. Uh, Meta is one of the few companies that actually have their own computer brand. Uh, so we can come in from start to finish to help you with build out. We can build an esports arena for a company, a uh, small business that wants to get started, schools, um, and we can scale it from 12 PCs to as many multiples of 12 as you would like. Say when, you say, when you say arena, I'm thinking of like a indoor basketball court, like massive thing, big Absolutely. stadium. What's, what, 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 what is an esports arena? What is it supposed to look like for those of us who aren't familiar so with esports? Esports arena can look like whatever you choose to look like. But our esports arena has bleachers, it has 8K TVs on the wall. Uh, and we have a, we actually built in New Market, Maryland, a, a, a meta esports arena uh, right there in the center of New Market. Uh, uh, and it's, it's pretty much a show place on a small scale, granite, uh, gaming tops, um, and, and the whole work. So it's, it's really something to see. That's cool. So just going back to that day one, um, or early days, we'll say, um, you've got the need, you've got the gap, you have a good idea of how you're going to achieve it. Did you have to go, um, borrow money to make this happen? Or were you able to kind of bootstrap from the ground up? So we, we were very fortunate. We had the funding, uh, myself and my partner, we had the funding to make this happen. Um, it, it takes a lot. Anytime you're dealing with computers or cyber stuff, it's, it's yes. a lot. So our, our arena, um, you know, it's, it's 13 stations of that, the bleachers, again, AKs, uh, that takes funding for that. Luckily, we did not have to uh, go to the bank for those. And luckily we signed a client on as well. So part of another avenue or revenue stream that we have is that we provide esports as a services for colleges. We help them with their recruiting. We actually bring in our team of coaches or meta um, uh, 
curriculum that we have for each game. And then we contract out with colleges to take over their esports uh, um, uh, department. We help them bring in students and we run the day to day of their esports company. So we signed uh, a school for that uh, uh, right away. We're uh, Mitchell College in, in New London, Connecticut is a, is a meta school. So you can go there and run that meta program through there. They compete in the NECC. Meta is actually recognized as a college within the NECC. So we actually compete there as well. Um, so it's, uh, we, were, we were very fortunate to get a school signed. We have contracts out to multiple other schools as well. Okay. So you knew that there was a gap, or at least you felt there was a gap in the market here. And you also had a client willing to sign on with you immediately. So just that kind of confirmation that, hey, you've, you've got something here that people want. So yeah, super, Absolutely. Important, su super important when you are starting your business, guys, to make sure that there is actually a demand for your product before you go and put a ton of money and a ton of time into it. And finding clients or customers who are willing to pull out their wallets and say, yes, I want to buy what you're selling even before you make it is a great sign that you have got a good business idea. Okay, so Chris, we've got a ton of gap in this market. We know that there is not a lot of people doing what you're doing and doing it at the same level you're doing it at. Um, say that there are young adults out there who think, you know what, there's nothing going on in my town. I would like to start something myself as opposed to maybe trying to get Meta's come in and provide the service. How would they get started? Like, what would you do? Well, they yeah, that, there is a huge need for it. And they can also come see us too. So we sell licensees of our product. We can help get uh, uh, someone who is interested in having that brought to their town. It's like, hey, Philadelphia is in a big need for this. We, we realize that Detroit's in a huge need for this as well because we are pretty unique on the market. Uh, they can come to us. We can help them get arena started for that. And we can license out our product uh, for them as well. And a whole lot cheaper than they could put any kind of business together for young op entrepreneurs. So, uh, there's a, uh, it's tons of opportunity for us. We're definitely not keeping it all to ourselves. No. And I think it's, it's great when we hear businesses like that. And if there are, I'm sure entrepreneurs who are interested in starting something similar, like they can always approach, I always say approach your competitors and see what, see what they will, what they're willing to share with you. Sometimes they are willing to give you a little bit of guidance, a little bit of help because, increasing the amount of quality companies in your space is only going to make the sport bigger, better, and you know, it, essentially more lucrative for everybody involved. Absolutely. So, so yeah, another, another tip, make sure you, you connect with your competitors in the area and just say, hey, I'm doing this. What did you learn along the way? How'd you get started? Do you have any advice for me? Do you have any products that I could use or license from you to save me a ton of time and effort? Like, yeah, great ideas all the way around. All right. Final question. I asked this of all of my um, small business interviews, what is a challenge you are currently facing in your business that you would love some suggestions and some like ideas outside the box to help you fix? Yeah. So our biggest thing right now, of course, is everybody's biggest is the pandemic. It's really hard to put students inside of our arena and kind of pack the arena to get the, um, you know, get the word out about what great product do we offer, just like everybody else is doing. However, we did trans you know, transfer a lot of this to online. Uh, we, we can fully run everything that we intend to do online uh, remotely. Um, you just don't get the experience of being inside the arena. This is, this, this is going to go away soon. Hopefully uh, within the next six months, we'll be having a different conversation. But right now it's definitely putting a, a, a load on us because we expected to fill every seat by now. Yeah. So just um, so you guys have an idea of time, this is November of 2020. Um, yeah, we don't know when the official end of this pandemic is going to be or what that's going to look like or how businesses are going to look coming out of that. Are they going to go back to the way they were? Is there a whole new world out there in terms of how businesses are going to approach day-to-day -day, um, usage? But so if I'm getting this right, your challenge is pretty much recreating the environment that you get in the arenas through an online platform because you're able to get kids to play and people to play and the signups are still there, but just recreating that environment is one of the issues. Is that right? That is correct. And, and, and I'll tell you for the arena, one of the things that we offer is that we have PCs there that you can play. So if you don't have a gaming PC at your house to play some of these higher end games, because gaming PCs are expensive, you can come here, join a team and you can play there. You can practice there. Um, without that, that limits the amount of customers that we can reach to. So if they don't have a gaming PC at their house, they're not going to be able to play some of our games. So it's definitely a challenge for us. Uh, some of the games are cross-platform. Some of them are not. So the ones that are not, we definitely see 
low enrollment numbers for that. And I can assure you it's based on not being able to come to the arena. Okay, so if you have a potential solution to Chris's challenges, so the access to gaming PCs, gaming level PCs, um, recreating that environment from an arena at home, if you have any ideas on how to improve those, make sure you put them in the comments below. And you know, you could end up being one of those ideas that helps Chris grow his business. And he, I'm sure he'd be, be very great. appreciative of that. All right, Chris, any last words of advice for our young entrepreneurs out there getting started? No, I'll, I'll tell you that 90% uh, of businesses, it's an idea is great, but your personal grind that you do, the dedication and time that you spend into it is going to make the difference if your business makes it or not. And that's a fact. Uh, nothing, no, no good idea can ever replace the amount of grind that you're willing to spend on it. So keep digging. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yes, sir.